Dear friends, in this video lesson, we complete part three of our journey in logistic regression, what I call walk the talk. We have already done part one and part two. This is part three with which we conclude the conceptual framework of logistic regression modeling with a practical example. The same example we take, the data set 100 customers, purchase is one, zero is no purchase, Simon credit card, if you have, it will be one, otherwise zero, the amount spent last year by a customer in thousand dollars, all these are given and we proceed with part three. Step four, we have done step one and step two and step three. This is step four. Remember, there are six steps we have to understand in the analysis of logistic regression. Step four, odds and probability, this is very important. You can see the Python output. The coefficient is displayed for spending and card. The p-value is there for a ready reference. The odds ratio is given with probability alongside. 1.4073 for spending, 3.0004 for the card, and the corresponding probabilities are displayed here. So let's interpret for every $1,000 increase in spending, the odds that a customer will buy the product is 1.4073 to 1 within bracket 58.46 percentage probability of buying given the card status remains unaltered. In other words, we fix the card status as it is. We don't vary it. For every $1,000 increase in spending, the odds that a customer will buy the product is 1.4073 to 1, meaning is 1.4073 of that of a customer uh, not buying the, making the purchase. Therefore, the probability is 58.46 percentage of buying so if you divide not buying, which is 41.54, you'll get this ratio. Odds is equal to probability by one minus probability. So this tells you a story that if you are able to increase the spending habit of a customer by another additional $1,000, then the odds that he will buy is 1.4073 to 1. Let's now look at likewise the odds that a customer having the card or not. Now here card is not a continuous variable. It's a categorical variable. Therefore we interpret like this. The odds that a customer having card buying the product is three times that of a customer having no card. In other words, the odds that a customer having the Simon credit card buying the product is three times that of a customer having no Simon card buying the product. So 75% probability of buying, 25% probability of not buying, the ratio will be equal to 3.004. If, if we take three decimal places, it is three. Provided spending is kept at the same level and does not vary. In other words, in practical situations, both can vary, in which case you will have to find out separately. But when you interpret spending, card is held constant. When you interpret card, spending is held constant. So this is the power of odds and probability, which is the cornerstone of logistic regression. Step five, confusion matrix. What is your accuracy? And we plot here on the vertical axis, we have actual purchased, not purchased. 
on the horizontal predicted not purchased and purchased. This is a classification table. You can see 52 plus 20 is 72. So out of 100 records, 72 have been correctly predicted. Therefore, the accuracy is 0 0.72. What is recall? Recall is the probability of predicting purchase given actual is a purchase. So actually 40 people bought and the model correctly predicted 20. So 20 divided by 40 is the recall probability, which is 0 0.5. What is precision? Precision is the probability of actual purchase given predicted purchase. Now, the model predicted 20 plus 8, 28 the model predicted as people who will buy out of which 20 is the actual, therefore 20 divided by 28, if you round it to two decimal places, it is 0 0.71, that is the precision. A very beautiful table and we must understand accuracy, recall and precision. Together it tells a story how good the model is. It's uh, no doubt uh, a fairly wonderful uh, display of uh, the ability of the logistic regression for this example, but not the best because overall accuracy is about 72%. Now, the last step, which is the clincher, step six, is the ROC curve, receiver operating characteristic curve. So we have on the horizontal axis false positive rate on the vertical axis, true positive rate, and we have a divider here, and there is a curve which is above in blue color, which is above the divider, and the area covered for this model is 68.3 percentage. Not bad, not very robust, but acceptable. Actually, the best discriminating power would be a very steep curve which is far above the central line, the divider. In this case, it's pretty okay, acceptable, and the logistic regression is concluded, ladies and gentlemen, with step six uh, with this example. Thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed. I must again re-emphasize all the three parts you see to get a complete understanding of how the logistic regression works. Thank you very much once again.